Peter Thomas was born in Pensacola, Florida on June 28, 1924, the son of a Welsh minister and an English teacher. He learned from them how to communicate, project, and enunciate. Every night growing up, Peter read stories aloud to his family, which perfected his technique. His father's philosophy? Words must be visualized, understood, and felt before spoken. Along with learning the values of history, music, speaking, education, and integrity, all helped build the foundation for the most listened to broadcast voice in radio and television history. I knew this is what I wanted to do for my, and during my life, and it's been wonderful. At only 13 years old, Peter landed his first radio job in a daily drama. Since the station could not legally pay him due to his age, they arranged for the sponsor, Piper Aircraft, to give him flying lessons. He left high school in 1943 and voluntarily joined the United States Army. In World War II, Peter was part of the 1st Infantry Division in Europe. He and his comrades were pinned down with German machine guns when they went ashore at Omaha Beach the day after D-Day, June 6, 1944. That life-altering experience gave him a deeper appreciation for his fellow soldiers, his country, and his freedom. All I remember was the coldest winter for a Florida boy to be <laughs> the oh. Battle of the Boat. Oh. For his service, Peter received a battle star for each of his five campaigns in which he served, including the Purple Heart, the Bronze Star, the unit French Croix de Guerre, and the Belgian Forager. Peter continues to be active in veterans' affairs throughout the world. The 50th anniversary of D-Day, and I took my two of my grandchildren with me, and it was a beautiful experience. Things really hadn't changed that much as far as Omaha Beach and Normandy was concerned. It was like yesterday. 50 years had gone by, but it was a magnificent uh, time. In 1945, Peter returned to radio after World War II and attended college through the GI Bill. It was at this time that he asked his high school sweetheart, Stella Barano, for her hand in marriage. They were happily married for 68 years and were blessed with three children and seven grandchildren. Peter attributes much of his career success to the help his beloved Stella gave him. His big break came in 1948 when the Hamilton Watch Company heard him doing a local poetry program called Dreamtime and invited him to New York to do the program nationally. In the early 1950s, Peter went to work for CBS television, where he was chosen as the local New York news anchor for the CBS morning show with Jack Parr. The show was broadcast live on WCBS from Grand Central Station. His counterpart on the network feed was none other than Walter Cronkite. He did the network feed to the, uh, to, on CBS, on the Jack Parr shows, the early morning show. Oh, wow. And we used to have, and Johnny Carson came on as a replacement one summer. Yeah. And uh, Dick Van Dyke came on as a replacement when Jack Parr was away. The story about helping one's fellow man seems to be a favorite of young artists. He took the train from Greenwich, Connecticut at 4.40 every morning and in time became close friends with all the train men. All these train men were such good friends. I mean, they'd ask him when you got on, do you want to sleep this morning? We'd stop in Portchester, which was an unscheduled stop, yeah. run over and get coffee and bagels. <laughs> and it was like no one would, would believe it. Yeah. We were all good friends. After 13 years at CBS, Peter left to pursue his freelance and documentary work full time. Since then, Peter has been the spokesperson for thousands of television commercials, including American Express, Coca-Cola, IBM, Burger King, Estee Lauder, The History Channel, ESPN, Exxon, Alaska Airlines, and Hewlett-Packard, just to name a few. 
Peter has also narrated several of PBS's acclaimed Nova episodes, considered by many in the industry as the top of the food chain for a documentary series. With the approach of winter, he began his long journey home. But perhaps the snows came early, or he lost his way. Suffering from hypothermia, the mountains got the better of him. His voice was even heard in Paul Hardcastle's controversial 1985 hit, 19. According to a Veterans Administration study, half of the Vietnam combat veterans suffer from what psychiatrists call post-traumatic stress disorder. Which Hardcastle composed after being inspired by a Peter Thomas narration. The 1984 ABC documentary, Vietnam Requiem. They fought the longest war in American history. For more than five decades, Peter Thomas has narrated Academy Award winning documentaries. Earth is described as a water planet. And without a doubt, water is our most important resource. Television specials, concert performances, and commercials. At 90 years old, he's still working as hard as ever from his home recording studio in Naples, Florida, and studios across the world. Today, Peter may be best known for his work on Court TV's true crime documentary series, Forensic Files. A remote spot in Teleco, Texas, linked by a rickety wooden bridge over Smith Creek Every new script comes in, it's just fabulous to be able to investigate it and uh, it's, a, it's a, a blessing every day to be able to get these scripts and communicate with people all over the United States mm -hmm. and get involved, do your research. It's really a, a continuing education with documentaries especially, mm -hmm. you know, the commercials are, are, are a lot of fun but the documentaries I take very seriously. Peter Thomas is a man of exceptional quality character and conviction. His humanitarianism reflects both the patriotism and generosity of spirit that embody his life. He works tirelessly every day, dedicating himself to improving the community through his charitable work. John Steinbeck wrote, man, unlike anything in the universe, grows beyond his work walks up the stairs of his concepts and emerges ahead of his accomplishments. Peter Thomas has emerged at the top of his class.